Welcome to the WAN Show, everyone. We've got a lot of great topics for you today. So we're going to be starting off with Microsoft having to pay Sony for every Xbox that they sell, which is friggin' awesome. World of Warcraft is testing in-game payments. We've got the Steam Summer Sale and just general tips on how to make your summer game buying experience that much better. There's a Japanese full-body mech suit that's coming out. There's You can actually buy one if you have enough ball in... 152 grand, I think. Yeah, something yeah. along those lines. Uh, Lenovo is now the world leader in PC sales. There's two separate reports confirming it. There's a worm that can regrow its head and keep its memories after the regrowth. Or, well, not quite, but more on that. And guys, we've got something really cool to show you. So there's those topics and more. But check this out. We now have an intro that is all new for the WAN Show this week. Boom. <laughs> All right, guys, so continuing with our theme from last week, we are going to be doing some live callers. However, we're changing the paradigm a little bit to use some sort of buzzword speak. So instead of using live callers for Q&A, we are going to be expecting live callers to have something to contribute to the particular topic that we're discussing. So I think if you guys want to start thinking about things and looking things up, one of the ones I really want to talk live about is the, uh, where is it right now? So helm.is. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a new private messaging platform. So go check it out right now, helm.is. Think about it. And we will be taking live callers on that topic as our first call in topic. And we are still going to do Q and A blitzes on Twitter. So that was a bit of a mistake we made last week where we abandon Twitter entirely. We're going back to Twitter. Don't worry. So our first topic of the day is, check this out guys, Microsoft gets to pay two to three pounds sterling per Xbox to Sony. So this is an article from, here we go, PCG Media. You can see my, uh, you can see my Facebook there. So basically having a Blu-ray drive as part of the Xbox 360 was not in the plan. They went with HD DVD. They bet wrong. Yep. That was unfortunate. Well, yep. they had a DVD player and then you could get an HD DVD add on, but Blu-ray was never really part of it. Now with Xbox one, they basically have to. They have to. Yeah. What else are they going to do? And Sony sits on the director council for Blu-ray. So, so well, Sony and pretty much, pretty much runs the runs thing. the Blu-ray show. Yeah. So Microsoft gets to pay basically two to three pounds per Xbox, which will amount to two hundred to three hundred or fifty, one hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars. Which, as a normal person, sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, in this whole play, really isn't that much, and it's not going to break either side. Yeah, but it's just kind of, kind of, funny. It's one of those awesome things. It's kind of like how um, all the Android handset makers pretty much have to pay Microsoft yeah. <laughs> to sell Android devices. And it, you know, it goes to show when you win a technology war like Sony did with Blu-ray, it could be paying off for you way, Long time. way down the road. The life of that technology, basically. Yeah. So that was an article from Tom Butler on PCG Media. And let's move right into our next topic, I guess. Oh, I'd love to hear what you guys think, whether it's on Twitter or on Twitch, of our new intro, as well as our new background. So we have reimagined The WAN Show completely. We also have a new brand. So The WAN Show is... Weekly, weekly analysis and news. Thank you. <laughs> weekly analysis and news. And it also stands for Wide Area Network. So it's an internet show. So it's, so it's, got, a, it's got a little nerd humor going on there and an actual real name. So it's, yeah, it kind of works. Yeah, it's both. We had some suggestions that it should be the weekly analysis news and gaming show. But I don't think that would sit well with sponsors. No. <laughs> no, probably not. And you know what's funny is, like, guys, don't don't imagine for a second we didn't think of it because <laughs> the the WAN show actually came from a conversation where we were gonna make it the weekly analysis news and commentary show. 
<laughs> so that that was what we actually were talking about, and then we were like, oh, actually, Wen shows pretty smart too. <laughs> we could do that instead. Yeah. Then we can be clever and not gross. <laughs> It's hard to do, man. I know, I know. We try really hard on here, though. We do, we do. We usually avoid it. I don't. <laughs> you do. But I was trying to, like, save you there. <laughs> trying to be like, no, we're, we're usually good. Just, nope. After your mom called in last week, there's no saving me. Because <laughs> all of my deepest, darkest secrets have been revealed forever. It's just game over for me, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah, the background. I think people think there was some planning that went into this to make it, like, awesome. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> How do we fit stuff on this wall? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're in a room right now that is extremely small, but at least we're not in Slick's uh, testing area. Cause that, that was nuts. That was stupid. I couldn't use the chair in that room anymore. I mean, whose idea was that? Mine. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Because we had EA. to put it somewhere. We had nowhere else to put it. Yeah. You get an EA fist bump for that, Thank so yeah. It was... Well, at least I got the job done. And at least it worked. That's true. And on launch day, you were actually able to stream. Yes. See, that's, there's, a big, there's a big difference yes. there. Okay, but I think we could all agree we needed a bit of a change of scenery here. We needed yeah. things to be a little bit smoother. So, yeah, there you go. And 10 points if you guys can find the Apple product behind us. It's kind of an Easter egg. There's an Boom. Apple product. Oh, okay, well, you found... Well, the white <laughs> box, I guess, is sort of obvious. <laughs> All right. I didn't know there was one. That's so troll. Okay, what should we do for our next uh, topic? Speaking of things that are, like, troll and ridiculous, you couldn't even figure out what the point of this was when I posted oh, it in the, oh, in the live stream oh Google goodness. Doc. So check this out, guys. You send it. So this is an article from thenextweb.com. Here we go. Has rebranded to Hightail. Woo! Woo! Yeah! yeah! Woo! No, have a party in the corner. Party in the corner! Woo! Corner party! Um, what? Okay, so I understand why they're doing this. And they have a huge, like, campaign around it. Yes. There's, like, a huge thing, and they have a big explanation. We're looking beyond file sharing to rival collaboration software makers. However, here's my point that I would make to... Um, you send it, or Hightail, or whatever you guys want to call it. Um, Hightail? What is it? That means, like, go somewhere fast. Yeah, Hightail it out of here. Yeah, it has nothing to do with collaboration or sending files. It actually usually means, like, leaving an area. Yes. So, like, not collaborating. Like, to me, Hightail is the worst possible name for something that has to do with collaboration. And they have this huge thing. I don't Oh, we're not streaming the... Oh, yeah, we, I can. Here, here, yeah, I'll switch. Sure. Go, go. They yeah. have this huge screen going on. If you look at the H, I don't know if there's a bigger version of this, but if you look at the, the reddish line uh, right above the H, that is not just like a random line. That's supposed to be the start of a command prompt. What? Command prompt. And that hovers above the H. Um, what is it? Making it so that it, the white space between the orange red line is a T, and the H is a T. So the H and the T go together, and that stands for Hightail. So their individual small symbol is actually just going to be that H with the orange line above it, because that's Hightail. But and they we... make this huge deal about it. I'm like, no one's going to get that. Yeah, we talked about this before, but remember how Facebook's whole thing was like. <laughs> we spent nothing on the branding of Facebook. It was like an F. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it doesn't matter. Because it actually doesn't. It's like you look at something like Kijiji. Was that a clever brand that meant something? No, it's a friggin' random word as that people can remember. As far as I remember. know, it doesn't matter. Like, Hightail, to me, the only reason I'd remember is because I think it's phenomenally stupid. <laughs> so, in fact, I probably won't remember. I'll probably go to yousendit.com. Every time. I mean, if anything, they should have just created a separate sub-brand because that would have been just as much work. And just, like, slowly made, like, slowly brought yeah. their customers over. You send it by Hightail or something. Like, create an overarching brand. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Or something. Well, but better yet, call it you send it by something other than Hightail that's less stupid. No, not even. What, again, it doesn't matter, though. They could go with Hightail if they freaking want to, but then that could be the overarching brand, like you just said. And then their additional services, they could just have, instead of making it one thing... 
they could have the overarching brand as Hightail, you send it, and then all the other collaboration platforms that they have is just other things. And names for them that aren't dumb, too. You collaborate it. Who yeah. cares? It's stupid, but, like, it Less works, stupid. and everyone will know what it does. All right. So, moving into... Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. So, this is going to be our first call-in topic, guys. So, hopefully, you're working with the mod team to... Wait, did we give them instructions for how to call in this week? Has it changed? Uh, we have not, and there's been some problems. Huh? Um, You're deleting a group. Okay. Uh, hold on. All right, I'm going to do another topic in We're the meantime. We're working on it. Awesome. Good work. Okay, so next topic is throwable camera. This is fun. So my stupid on-screen keyboard keeps popping up here. This is driving me crazy. So this is an article from imagingresource.com. Now, this is not the first time that a throwable camera has been developed, but the Skeeto, Squeeto, I'm guessing they're going for Skeeto, like Mosquito, but... I watched the video, I think he said Skeeto. Okay, so the Skeeto, I didn't remember what they called it. So the Skeeto is aiming to be more of a consumer-friendly device, and it has been developed and patented by Steve Hollinger, who's figured out a way to counteract the biggest problem with a thrown camera, and that is that it's usually wobbly and disorienting. So even if you've watched footage that's been taken on something like a Parrot AR drone, which is relatively stable, but when the wind comes along... Yep. It's, st it's still quite wobbly. Like, they do a really good job, but yes, it's still quite wobbly. But it can make you motion sick, and it can be uncomfortable for many viewers. So apparently, the processing that's being done in the Skeeto compensates for all of that in such a way that the video is actually viewable. So if you check out the... Uh, imagingresource.com article, there's actually a video showing the 360 degree panoramic view that this camera is able to generate. And even more excitingly than this, they are planning a low light version. So it'll transmit near IR and thermal data to see through the dark, smoke and fog. It's really cool because there's, okay, there's, there's like tactical versions that are, I can't remember what it's called, but it's not this guy. It's one that was existing from before, but like the Israeli military use it and stuff, but it's $5,000. Yeah. And this one has more functionality. And so I'm thinking like smaller municipality fire departments that would can be cool. huck a dark ball in and right. be like, okay, there's no one in here. We don't have to risk everything. Right. So That's if there's a, fascinating. if there's a room that they're kind of worried about, they can just huck a dark ball in there and figure it out. Or, or whatever. Firefighters, police, huck a dark ball around the corner if they're, like, if they're raiding something. Right. They don't have to worry about it. They can figure out if someone's in there. Yeah. Someone shoots it, you know someone's in there. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, the worst case scenario, it costs you a few hundred bucks or whatever to find out that you don't have to die. And not, yeah, not a bullet in the chest. Yeah. So, like, that's... There's actually a lot of really interesting applications for this. I'm, the main one I'm interested in is the firefighting one. Because right. you can see through fog. Or any kind of search and rescue Any search and rescue at all. Because There's you actually... Could... Yeah, no, sorry, keep going. No, I was just going to say any kind of search and rescue. You could, like, feed them into wherever. You can, you can drop them down a hole. Yep. Even if, like, if something's stuck, like some animal or something is stuck down a hole, you can throw it down there and it will go to it because it glows, right? Right. Yeah. They showed an example of a, of a cat that was stuck down, a, like, a pipe of some sort. And they drop it down the pipe and the cat goes up to it. So you know the cat's in there, you know the cat's okay. You know the cat's it's like safe. Sniffing the camera. I had something similar happen with Rocket. He fell behind my bookshelf. And I, I just had I used a flashlight to see him down there. He's looking up at me like this. He's like, Hello, what do I do? <laughs> please help me. Well he wasn't making any noise, which as you know is unusual for him. Yeah. And so we eventually rescued him by putting like a piece of carpet down and he was able to like <laughs> army crawl his way out of there. It was kinda it was kinda awesome actually. That is pretty cool. Um not quite related to throwable cameras, but whatever. So it stitches the footage together, makes a single feed, very exciting. I mean, these kinds of technologies, things like the uh, that, that, that weird smartphone controlled ball. Yep. Can't even remember what that's called I don't anymore. That's called either, but yeah. But I mean, with VR technology, and you can like go around different places. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Things like AR drone, things like this. The processing power that we can fit in these devices is becoming just ridiculous. So, are you ready for callers? I don't. Uh, let's move on to Video Game High School Season 2. Oh, I was going to do a Twitter Blitz. Sure, do a Can Twitter Blitz. Can I do a Blitz. Twitter Blitz yep. first? Okay. Yep. Guys, it's Twitter Blitz time. And look at that. We're, like, actually ready with all the scenes set up. This is, like, crazy awesome, cool stuff. All right. 28 new interactions. Watching the live stream. Ah, it's called The WAN Show now. 
Yeah. Which I actually made the mistake in the announcement video on YouTube. And I think he corrected me. So, um, yeah. Live stream for a moment in the coffee shop. Excellent. Someone says Hytale is a better logo than EA. I actually disagree. EA's logo is fine. EA's logo is fine. It's EA Electronic Arts, which makes sense. Whereas Hytale is like, oh, well, here we wrote the word, but look, there's this. There's this thing, and it does stuff, and it's a command prompt. And it's a command prompt, because which, like, even the dorkiest person in the world wouldn't be looking for a command prompt line in in a in a no, logo no. on the first letter of the logo. That's the other problem. <laughs> it's just it's weird, and like, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah. Hi yeah, Hytale, because their, their whole thing is like, yeah, it's for speed and agility, and they wanted to get away from, you know how, like, Dropbox, you put your files in a box, like, everything yeah, is objectified actually makes and sense. makes sense. They're like, yeah, we want to get away from that. It's like, you should probably not. Sean says, congratulations, be on time. We actually should be more on time moving forward, and not more on, like, stupid on time, but, like, more additionally greater than on time, because this stream setup now lives here. The only things that move are the microphone and the camera right there. That's it. Everything there's, else is here. There's a few bits of audio that had to be set up this time that won't have to be set up in the future, hopefully. So that'll even help us a little bit more as well. Joey asks, what do you think of Elon Musk's Hyperloop idea? You know what? If there's anyone who can pull it off, it's him. Apparently, and I actually haven't heard about this yet, but we should add this to the live stream for next week once we've had some time to read up and uh, see what we think of it. Elon Musk... Hyperloop. So apparently it'll allow you to get from New York to LA in an hour. Okay, what what? You don't do you know who Elon Musk is? I know yes, but I've never heard of Hyperloop. Hyperloop. But this must be a new thing. So anyway, guys, we're gonna get back to you on that one. Very uh very cool sounding stuff. Ten That's points awesome. for the main brain for finding the Apple TV. Finally watching live from India. Hello! Hello. Background looks brilliant. Thank you. Uh, part of the magic this week is it's separately lit. So here, you can see my hand is very bright back here. There's, uh, there's lighting under the couch. So that makes it... That it separates us from it in a big way. Because you see this black box behind my, behind my shoulder? Before we added the lighting with a black shirt, I faded right into it. But uh, Diesel and B-Roll, who have been trying to explain to me separate lighting for the background and the subject for months, have finally gotten through. <laughs> Apparently, uh, James thought it was a Star Wars reference as well. Juan, Obi-Wan. Oh, that's pretty tenuous. That's about like Hightail with the <laughs> chi. Well, I think that's easier to get than Hightail. I think the Wan show is making fun of Chinese people. That one. See, the previous one? What? Like, maybe? This one? No, I, I don't really get it. Juan? Like, Juan? Wan? It's, it's Wan. For yeah, Wan. it's Wan Show, so. Uh, love the name, love the intro in the background. Keep it up, lads. Thank you. Someone wants the logo on my side. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it this week, but we can move it later. All right, let's see some more Twitter Blitz. Uh, watching live from the UK. Hello, you're awesome. Send a hi to me. Okay, hi. Okay, guys, let's try to keep the shout-outs to a minimum. Uh, what would you choose, G500 or Death Out of 2013? Ooh, good question. See, you've used the Death Hour 2013. I have not. Very twitchy buttons. I'd probably go G500, not because I like the shape better necessarily, but because I would less often accidentally press the buttons. I haven't personally used the Death Hour 2013, so I can't say anything. But, but you love the G500. But I love the G500 because I'm used to the form factor. Not really because of other things. It does have problems with its lasers. There's a few other things... I just have not used the death adder. Okay, good set of speakers for desktop gaming setup. I think uh, we both use SP2500s. My wife uses SP2500s. They're awesome. There's not much else out there. They're good for a really wide range. I listened to a huge range of music yesterday. Yep, SP2500s. Really good, and you can often get them quite cheap. Yep, uh, GTX 660 Signature 2 for the win. By the time you're buying a Signature for the win, whatever overclock thing, uh, get a TI. You're usually better off with that. $600 APU-based system versus PS4 or Xbox One. Good question. Uh, usually, because of the way that the games are optimized for the console hardware, you can't just buy equivalent PC hardware and get the same gaming experience. It just doesn't really work that way. Not to mention, Xbox One's going to come with Kinect 2, or whatever they're called, Kinect 1. 
Uh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but... <laughs> that's interesting. I think it's Xbox One Connect. Uh, yeah. Or something like that's that. It's it. like, what a branding disaster that whole <laughs> one thing was. Just why? Um, would you pay for Google Fiber? Yeah. Yeah, of course. What kind of question is that? We're paying more than that for a worse yeah. connection now. It's way worse. Way worse. Would you recommend an i3 or an i5 for an editing or streaming PC? Not I'd, really. If you're in that price range, I'd try and get an AMD processor yeah. that's going to have more cores. I'd get a six core AMD CPU yeah. in that price range. Uh, Vengeance C70 or Obsidian 650D? 650D looks way better, in my opinion. Depends what your style is. Yeah. I was just going to say. That's true. Look at the other parts in your build. Figure out what you're going for. Look at your fans. Even. C70 cooling is better. Yep. So, like, there's 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 a few things to look at there. For for raw looks, I think Linus and I would both agree 650D looks better, but I have seen a few C70 builds that look amazing. What do you think the 780 Lightning is going to look like? I have no idea. They've been teasing this thing so hardcore. Computex, they had it in a sealed box and no one could look at it. Did you see that? No. It was apparently inside the box, but it was opaque and no one was allowed to see it. Uh, yeah, um, it was kind of bizarre, actually. I wonder. All right. Have you taken advantage of the Steam Summer Sale yet? A lot. Too much. Should we transition into that topic here? Bad amounts. Yeah, we can. We can transition to that. Let me All bring right. up my... My wallet is, like, scared because there's, like, 10 days left. And that's, like, possibly really not good. Um, where is it? Okay, I have three pro tips to throw out there. We had the Steam Summer Sale announcement of someone guessing that it was July 11th on, I think, July 10th. That was on our forum. I know lots of other people guessed it too, but this guy guessed it, and that's awesome. So if you can jump to the Steam one. Ah, my on-screen keyboard keeps popping up. There you go. Rage quit. There we go. Steam Summer Sale. Whoa, there we go. So this guy guessed it, and he guessed it by figuring out that the end time of a sale previous to the summer sale was <laughs> interesting. I thought that was pretty cool, because there's a few other ways, like, some, there, it was apparently leaked in a ticket. Okay. Someone yeah. accidentally said, like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it, because there's going to be another sale, like, tomorrow or something. And the guy's like, oh, well, that's obviously the summer sale. Yeah, because it's summer. Yeah. So, Which like, makes sense. other people figured out other ways, but I thought this was interesting, so that's very cool. Three random pro tips that I either figured out myself or got from other random websites around the net. One, if you're buying games in the Steam Summer Sale, I would highly recommend buying them as gift codes. You can redeem gift codes yourself. If you buy a gift code, you can just add it to your Steam library at any point in time. And that makes it so that it's not already added to your Steam library. So if you decide at the end of the sale that you don't necessarily want it anymore and a buddy really wants it, you can transfer it to him. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So there's, there's no real drawback to buying it as a gift. You just don't add it to your library instantly. If you know you're gonna play it, like of course, just buy it normally, but whatever. Pro tip number two, if the Steam sales are lagging, you can go to steamdb, as in steamdatabase.info slash sales, and it'll show you all the sales. So the Steam main page with all the sales on it lags out all the time. I'm sure tons of you have seen that already. So if you just go here, that's another portal that you can see it at. And pro tip number three, Amazon is price matching all of the Steam sales right now in their summer game sale. And if you use the discount code GOONCAVE, capital G-O-O-N, CAVE, you get an additional 15% off. Wow. Sometimes, you got to be careful. If you do want them all on Steve, Steam, make sure when you're looking on Amazon that it's the right platform. Because you can get Origin, you can get Uplay, you can get whatever, Blah. right? So, yeah. So, <laughs> so if you want it on Steam Platform, make sure that the code you're buying off Amazon is for Steam Platform. That's just like if I handed you a secret box, and I was like, this has a game, but I won't tell you what developer made it. So there's a chance that you could get, like, a shiny, diamond-encrusted, um, you know, croissant that is enjoyable and flaky and light. I don't know if a diamond croissant would actually be very good for you if you eat it, but... <laughs> like, die. Okay, but, the, but the, the other option is you get, like, a diamond-encrusted, like, turd with a great marketing department behind it, but then just, like, the worst... So wait, SimCity? Yeah, pretty okay, much. Right. SimCity, like, how did they screw that up so badly? The game, the, the, like, the game mechanic is so simple. Build a city. And there's like all these obvious things that people asked for after launch, and they're like, nah, ah. you don't need that. Oh, That's yay. Cool. So yeah, take those tips, take the Goon Cave discount code, that stuff's awesome. I'm sure a ton of you already knew that stuff, I just wanted to make sure that everyone did, because those are all three very helpful things. What if they want more than just the tips? 
Watch the after party? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Um, are we ready for callers yet? You know what? Here's one thing I can tell you guys, if you want to call in for sure, is go to that bit.ly link right there, right there. Download Razor Comms because we are using Razor Comms as our live platform for call-ins. And it is also a very legitimate platform for gaming voice chat communication with your gaming buddies or your aunt or whoever else. Um, Definitely your aunt. Key advantages of Razer comms are that you don't need a dedicated server for it. It doesn't broadcast your IP to people you're communicating with, like Skype. There's an exploit for that. It's actually terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of terrible. Yeah. Um, the overlays don't kill you like <laughs> Skype ones can. <laughs> So they're actually potentially helpful as opposed to Ugh. the other way around. And the voice quality is actually outstanding. Yeah. So there you go. There Advantages you go. of comms in a nutshell. Also, it helps us out a whole lot if you download it using this bit.ly link. Makes us look really good. Because Razer, as you may or may not have noticed, is powering the WAN show these days. Okay, so we do appear to be ready. So All I'm right. Gonna, before we go, I'm going to give everyone a quick tutorial on how to call in. All right. Do so that. what you're going to do is first download Razer comms from here. If you already have it, uninstall it, delete your installer file, download it again, <laughs> install it, and then log in, go to your groups tab, which is the tab that shows like three people. Click on that, click find group, look for WAN space open. You'll find an open group for the WAN show. Oh, the open group is working now. Uh, wind speed got it all running up. All right. What happened was I tried to leave it. And when I left, because I was the owner, I deleted it on accident. Ah. So he just recreated it. That was fine. It All works. Right. Thank you, Winspeed. Anyways, join that group. Post your question in there. Do, uh, it's muted. Don't bother talking, because it's muted. So just post your questions, and you might get pulled over by moderators, and then that brings you into the closed waiting room, and then there's a tier. Yeah, yeah. From there on, it'll be explained. But just join the WAN open room, and we'll figure it out from there. All right. So our first uh, live caller discussion topic is Hemel.is. I freaking, how do you say this? Like, what is this? It's, it's supposed word? to be one full word. The IS is part of the word. Hemless. I don't know. Hemless? If... See, the problem with naming anything Swedish is that it sounds like it's like an IKEA product. Have you seen that game where you have to guess whether it's the name of an IKEA product or just complete gibberish? <laughs> and it's like impossible? I have not seen that. That's awesome. All right, so Hemless, the beautiful and secure messenger. Okay, so they asked for a hundred thousand dollars. They got a hundred and fifty-two percent of that goal, which you can whoops see over there, right there, that number right there. So, so sorry, I'm just gonna cut in real quick. We kind of confuse people a little bit because I just told them that they need to come into the open show, post a question, and they get accepted based on their question. But now we're doing a discussion topic. Yeah, but I told them earlier in the show that this was going to be yeah. our first yeah. live call discussion topic. All right. Oh, right, post a question. Yeah, we're not doing Q&A on voice anymore. Okay. Go. Wait, you're not looking at... Okay, fine. All right, so basically, ever since all of this NSA stuff has started, well, really getting blown up by Snowden, um, it's, it's become a much bigger concern for people what's going on with their private information. Because a lot of things that people just kind of took for granted, like if I send a text message, well, no one's reading that, right? Wrong. Anyone at your telco can pull your entire text message history. Like, Everything. that. Like, they've even released stats of, like, what percentage of text messages are dirty. And if they know that, and if they're analyzing it to that level, Oh man, come on, you think someone like can't read it? So, okay, so there's that. Um, look at platforms like Skype, which used to be relatively secure. Actually, this is one of our after party discussion topics is how Microsoft is slowly killing Skype. And it's a slow, painful, poisonous death. By slowly, we mean like Quite injecting quickly. the poison into their carotid artery <laughs> and sort of, you know, holding a mouth and nose <laughs> so that it's like dies quickly and then snap its neck for good measure. Uh, because Skype is now run through Microsoft servers, which means any voice logs, okay, in theory, they wouldn't give them to anyone. They probably serve them on like hard drives on silver platters. But they could <clears throat> give voice chat logs over to some kind of an authority or whoever else. 
So, so this whole security issue and who's listening to my conversations has really blown up. And that is where, here we go, that is where Hemless is going to come in. So guys, if you want to back it, you, oh, yep. Yeah, PayPal or Bitcoin apparently are the ways. Fund is crossed out, so maybe they're not even taking backing anymore. Okay, this I didn't notice before. Fascinating. So guys, for the live callers, I would like to hear what do you think of your personal privacy in terms of messaging applications or in terms of voice chat? And are you one of those people who's kind of like, well, I got nothing to hide? Or are you one of those people where even if you have nothing to hide, you still feel very uncomfortable about some of the things that are going on right here. So here we go, guys. We're ready for our first live caller. Move them over. This is the waiting room. Okay, so, so waiting you room. Be looking at live. All it looks right. Looks like Mr. B dash O two or zero two. I'm not sure. Are we ready? I'm not sure. <laughs> What's going on, mods? All right. Need one now. So there's a few people waiting, but uh, no one's actually been moved over. All right. Ali is apparently in live. Ali, can you hear me? Live in live show, not live in... Oh, you're in the wrong chat. Oh wait. Okay. Well, apparently it's uh, apparently it's my fault. You need to go to your your main comms window. Sorry, guys. Oh, for crying out loud. No, no, no. Hold on. Here we go. There you go. And then go to groups. And then go to WAN show. Oh, I'm in the old one You're that the was the one. live stream. So they're all here. Yeah. There we go. All right, Ali. Can you hear me? Well, hello there. All right. So tell us how you feel about this whole privacy issue and have you heard of Hemless before we talked about it Turn on the show Turn up your live stream. I have heard of it. Um, sorry, I'm just testing. Can you still hear me? We can still hear you. Go All for right, it, man. Sorry about that. Well, I have heard about it and it was actually through Slick and he tweeted it out. So that's how I heard about it. And in terms of what my thoughts are on it, I think that it's a great idea. But the thing is, I consider myself a private person, as in I don't have a Facebook, which is very rare from where I come from here in London. But yeah, I still don't mind that companies have access to it because companies, they're just companies. They're, they're not really anyone who should care. I don't know if I'm phrasing this right, but I, what I mean by it is I don't care if Google knows what I'm doing. I only care if like my friends know. As you said previously when you were talking about Connect, as long as they don't post me, um, what was it, doing something on YouTube, oh, picking my nose. As long as they don't post me picking my nose on YouTube, I don't really care because it's just the company, it's not the public, so I'm all right with that. Okay, consider this for a second. What if someone who works at that company is a member of the public, which they all are? Then how <laughs> do you feel about it? Well... I consider it, oh, see, it's a tough question. And as you said, in this day and age, people are struggling to find the correct answer to this. So this is a philosophical debate, <laughs> if you ask so me. So why are you okay with Google knowing what you're doing, as long as they don't tell anybody, but you aren't okay with Facebook, for example? Because Facebook on your data, and they can do whatever they want with it. Whereas Google, they have certain policies in place so that it stays with them. That's a good point. Or, that's, that's different necessarily than the people knowing what you're doing. That's Facebook owning what you're doing. Right. So Where you upload, you upload a, picture, a picture, now it's theirs. Now it's as theirs. opposed to you upload a picture and now they can look at it. Which you already said it was okay for people to look at it because you uploaded it. Oh, I good don't upload pictures anyway, though. But what I'm saying is that my personal chats with my friends, that's the part I don't care about. 
like because I don't upload pictures as I said I'm a private person but me talking to my friends Google can know about that as long as no one else knows about that that's where I draw the line all right thank you very much for your call let's get another caller You're on welcome. the topic of privacy on the internet Sure. Okay, Mario, you're in. Let's go. At least you will be in a moment. Guys, we promise we're going to get this a little bit smoother at some point here. <laughs> or maybe it's Brad's Coolio. Someone's in here. All right, in the meantime, I guess I'll do a Twitter... Twitter question or two. Sure. I really recommend you try using Link, Office 365. It's more secure and there's an option to contact Skype users as well. Actually, Link is a very interesting option, but the problem is that it's cost prohibitive for real people for the most part. All right, Brad Coolio, you're on. Let's go. What are your thoughts on Hello. this whole privacy issue? Um, can you hear me? We yep. can. Go for it. Awesome. Um, I think it's not that bad. Like, um, if you're using like a really popular service, like I don't know, whatever Google services are, and then say Facebook, um, you'd be really dumb to put something that's highly inappropriate or illegal on them. So, I just go to other services for things like that. I, th I think a lot of the problem is not necessarily because both of these answers so far we've gotten what public other public people can see. So privacy as in your privacy settings within the program allowing other users to view your content. What Linus and I are talking about is not that at all. This is a private messaging service. It is competing with stuff like text messaging, not Facebook. Yes. Um, this is more keeping your data safe from stuff like NSA or any other government programs of that style because there are more um, from seeing your data. With that said, when people talk about Facebook now, they're not necessarily just talking about what you post on your public yep. wall, but also what you post in your messaging log, yep. chatting back and forth with people. But I think an interesting point about what Brad said is that he's talking about the kinds of users who may or may not benefit from this kind of thing, and you, you know, who would be stupid enough to post something on Facebook that they didn't want the world to know, or to send someone something in an SMS chat that they didn't want the world to know. And I think it's one of those things where this new service might not actually even help anyone who wasn't already aware of these things anyway. Like for example, my wife didn't know that it's not safe to send like a, uh, a credit card number via SMS or even by voice on a cell phone is not recommended had no idea and the reality of it is she'll also never hear about Hemless anyway so are we creating a service that helps people that will never get any help from it anyway I don't think so because there's all there's also the clause where you're only a criminal because you haven't been caught yet because there's so many laws that are so intertwined and so confusing that they can't properly count how many there are. That's true. They actually have no idea. Yep. There's so many laws that pretty much everyone is a criminal in some way. I definitely am. Yeah. I know which laws I broke. Yeah. So if at some point you get a bit of a criminal too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that entire colony that you live in was founded by criminals. So you're a criminal because of sins of the father and all that. Also, oh. speed is that oh, okay. typing on MX? If that's how it's gonna be. <laughs> is that you typing on MX Blues? Because you got to mute your mic, man. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So th that has part of it in it, too, because you might not know that what you're saying is a problem. You might right. have no idea. Okay. So you might be saying something thinking it's completely okay, not under, not mm. aware that, oh, I'm, I'm saying I'm doing bad things on right. Facebook. Right, particularly so. laws like tax laws. A lot of people are evading taxes that they don't know exists. Yep. Like uh, at all. Uh, people in Americans living in Canada still have to pay taxes in the states. Right. 
Almost that. no one knows that. <laughs> right. So, like, and that's a huge, that's huge tax evasion. But most right. people don't even know it exists. So if you, if you go, oh, hey, I just figured out that I should have been paying taxes for the last 15 years, and that gets picked up. Right. Big deal. All right. Thanks, Maybe Brad Coolio. Let's bring in our next caller. All right. Cheers. Love the show. Thank you. Mario, go. All right. So, guys, anyone who's calling in, once you're live, go. Start talking. We need... They're kind of backlogging a little bit because they had to create the channel and everything. We're hammering them a little bit hard right now. Um, hopefully the next call-in we do, there will be a, a, enough of a backlog of people. All right, already. awesome. So what we'll do is, in advance, we'll introduce our next call-in topic before we do a bunch of other stuff so people can think about it, they can get queued up in the call-in stream, and then we'll be ready to go for the next one here. So. I think Mario just has to turn on his voice. There we go. Mario, you're live. Hey, Linus. What's up? Hey. Hey. So my, my thoughts were that this helm is really for people who just intend to be saying things that should not be in public. Did you understand? Yep. So what about service like WhatsApp that's been around for years and people just don't realize How many well, WhatsApp people is do you quite a large service? I think most people now are kind of aware that it exists. I think most people within the nerdy circles that we travel in are aware of WhatsApp. But like for example, my mom there's no way. I was just gonna say my grandpa knows who it is but what it is, but that's because of me, so I guess that's not fair. Because we use it because he lives down in Arizona. So if I want to yes. text him long distance. But right. I can use WhatsApp, we can both use WhatsApp and it's free to communicate. Okay, yeah, so that, that's the point. WhatsApp is free. It's out there for years for now. But it doesn't have the, and like you said, people that might want to use the service might be using it because they want to keep things away. But I'm going to use my same argument that you might not have heard, which is where mm -hmm. you might not be aware that what you're saying is a problem. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, Mario, from your perspective, would you be, if you, if, okay, let's say WhatsApp and Helmus, however you pronounce it, are both equal in terms of features and in terms of the ease of use and, you know, you, in terms of cost, wouldn't you mm -hmm. rather use the service where you won't unintentionally break a law? I mean, another example is if you have any friends that don't happen to be completely exactly. upright citizens who send you a text <clears throat> telling them about something that they did, now you're an accessory. Yeah, but it's, it's like this. I will use the service that my friends have to. It's not only about me. If my friends don't use the other service, who will I talk to? That's a good point. That's they another have, good they, point. They also have to be using this service. For exactly. And most people that I know just don't even know that they are being monitored. They okay. don't so even let's, care. Let's say th so let me summarize it this way then, Mario. Your question is more, do we need another freaking messaging service? Exactly. Or do we need improvements or in the one that we have, in the one that we use? Good point, Mario. That is a very okay. good point. Thank you for your call. And I think we've actually got a very special guest who is going to be joining us here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and we did tease this on Twitter. I have no idea what Diesel did with the thing that I'm looking for right now, so I really hope it's in there. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. So our special guest today is the one, the only... Hold on. Wait for this. <laughs> that was a little bit delayed. Boom! This guy! I mean, I gotta resize this here. This is the one thing I wasn't quite ready. Ah, yes! Here, I'm gonna scooch over sure, a little sure. closer to you. Get cozy here. Oh, hold on. Apparently he's not ready yet. Get him in here, guys. So Paul from New Egg TV will be joining us to chat tech. We actually haven't necessarily got a particular topic, but uh, maybe he can talk a little bit about his own channel. So Paul is not only on New Egg TV these days. For those of you who don't 
already know that. He has a separate channel called Paul's Hardware, which of course is not an innuendo thing because Paul really takes the high road compared to what we do on this show. Um, well, at least what you do on this show. So why don't, we do, why don't we do one more topic while we wait for Paul to test his mic, and then we have our special guest for the week. This is extremely exciting. Awesome. So I'm going to jump back into Video Game High School Season 2. Ah, yes. So this got kickstarted. I believe it was a kickstarter. It might have been a different one of those crowdfunding services, but I think it was kickstarted. This got kickstarted. Their trailer, they're releasing a trailer in 48 FPS. Because more frames per second is more better. <laughs> Bam. I hope that B-Roll and Diesel in the other room there are listening right now. <laughs> so what they did is they filmed 24 FPS for anything happening in the real world. <laughs> we can hear you! <laughs> they filmed 24 FPS for anything happening in the real world, and they filmed 48 FPS for everything... Uh, action sequence. Action, action sequence. All in-game action is 48 FPS. Then they took the video playback at 40 F 48 FPS, and they doubled every frame of the 24 FPS playback so that it equaled. So there's some pretty funky stuff going on there. They believe they're the first big series to do this. It's pretty interesting, and I watched the high-res trailer on the Rocket Jump website, and it looks really, really good. Um, I personally like Video Game High School Season 1 a lot. It it started off a little rough. It had mixed, pretty mixed reviews overall. Some people kind of said, yeah, this is it's sort of juvenile garbage. And then other people said, oh, it's freaking awesome, I love it. It was a little bit of juvenile garbage. Yeah. It was a little bit. But it, it <laughs> okay. also had good content at the same time. Like, it wasn't super crazy AAA amazingness, but it was also the first time any of them had done something like Oops, this. Oops, my Skype's up. Oh, okay. um, it wasn't the biggest budget project ever. Like, they, they, they had a few interesting things to play with. This is now season two. They have a lot more budget. This is the second time they're doing it. I'm excited for where they can take it, because it started off kind of rough last time, and there's a few rough patches, but I think they can do a lot better. I time. mean, one of the things I'm excited about more than, more than anything else, so guys, rocketjump.com, go check it out. Uh, video game high school trailers on there. Uh, one of the things that's really exciting to me about this is the idea that YouTube guys are going mainstream are able to do full-scale productions as opposed to just make YouTube videos. I mean, that's one of the things that I think every YouTuber strives to become is a legitimate production. Yeah. So in the case of Linus Media Group, in the last 10 months, we've gone from me on a webcam in my kitchen to The Wan Show in its current form, which is still evolving. Yep. It's not perfect. Nope. And we are discussing internally other strategies, things that we could do to make it better, such as adding different shows at, on different days of the week that have different focuses. So some of you have expressed your desire to have more of a rapid-fire news format. Some of you have said you love the Twitter interaction. Some people are saying they love the voice interaction. So maybe at some point we split them out. Maybe we keep them together. Have, to have two of them, have three of them, have... One of them, who knows, but we're, we are balancing different ideas and we are looking for feedback on that kind of stuff. So if you spawn on the forum or just tweet at us or whatever, you can see our Twitter handles down here. Or the forum is fairly obvious, LinusTechTips.com. Um, check out there. Another thing we're thinking about doing is having in celebrity callers. Yes. Like Paul. Paul will be joining us today once he figures it out. I think he's still at work, so he had to get comms set up and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, next week... We are in talks with Logan from Raise the World, so we'd love to have him head over here. And, oh, okay, Paul just started voice chat. Oh, Paul ended voice chat. Okay, so let's move on to another topic here. Let's talk World of Warcraft to test in-game uh. payments. So this is a BBC article of all things. There we go, guys. <clears throat> Do you want to handle this one? So, as long as you have a character that is at least level 85, this is currently on the private test realm not on the normal main servers, but as, as long as you have a character that's at least level 85, you are able to do in-game purchases for a multitude of things. The only thing currently announced, they are definitely planning on releasing more, and they're planning on releasing more before it comes to the live servers. But the only thing currently announced is a potion called Enduring Elixir of Wisdom, which boosts experience by 100%. Now... So isn't that just paying to win? But you, you don't... One, you can't beat an MMO, MMO. But then, 
progressing in either PvP or PvE can be seen as winning, quote unquote, for an MMO. But On the other hand, they're requiring an 85 level plus they're, character. They're requiring that you basically fully level the character. Okay. Now you're leveling another character, so you don't necessarily want to go slowly through everything again. I don't actually really mind this. I wish they didn't do it as a paid thing. They've done bind on account gear, where that gear, one of the buffs on that gear is that it'll give you a higher percentage of experience. Um, yeah. Now I guess you can pay for more. I'm not sure what I think about this. I don't like it at all because it is already a paid-for service. Right. So you already pay a subscription. So compared to a free-to-play model, where oh. it's microtransaction-driven, now it's, okay, well, our subscriber base is declining. Now what? Let's grab some more money from them before they leave. Because League of Legends has experience boosters. League of Legends has IP boosters. IP is what you use to spend on uh, skins and runes and stuff. I don't mind that. Because you know what? It's a free-to-play game. they got to make money somehow. They're baller, but they got to make money somehow. Yeah. That's fine. I will and just... shareholders aren't going to want to see declining revenue no matter what. No. So someone like League of Legends, sure, that's your main source of income. I can play more and get the same thing. Yeah. That's fine. When I'm already paying 15 bucks a month for a subscription, I don't want Joe Blow, who decided to throw a little bit more in, to be able to level up faster than me, personally. Screw that. Just give right. me the extra 100%. I already leveled up this stupid character. So if they're willing to give it to you for free, then, you know, it's like, okay, if someone else pays, they can be a little bit ahead. But if everybody's paying... That I don't like. Personally, that I don't like. I don't know what other people think. Just That's how I'm viewing it. Because, like, I'm already paying for the game. Right. I don't want to pay more. Yeah. And it's not like 15 bucks a month isn't already quite a bit to ask, to be honest. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, that's why I stopped playing WoW. I played for a couple months, and I was just like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. What, I'm going to pay, like, $200 a year to play a game? You can, you can, going with humble indie bundle logic, which is kind of cheating, you can get, like, 20 games a month. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like... And that's not even paying minimums, so I don't know. It's a little bit crazy. I'm not into it personally. I think it's interesting, and I th I'm going to be interested to see their subscriber fluctuation. Right. Who knows? Maybe someone will come back because they'll go, oh, I have a level 90. I can just throw a few extra bucks and a monthly subscription and then Enjoy level some up of the new content. And not have to slow roll it. Right. Or is everyone going to be angry and leave? I'm not sure. I think it'll be interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, let's move into our next topic here. Lenovo is now the world leader in PC sales. I mean, okay, I remember saying today that this surprised me a little bit, and uh, Diesel and Slick both gave me a pretty hard time saying that I'm basically, like, my brain isn't functioning if I'm surprised by this. So what, you mean the Chinese manufacturer of laptops just became the highest in the world? Okay, well, hold on a second. Okay, okay. Well, it's not it's not like they're, you know, far and away number one, like, you know, they're double everyone else on the playing field. I mean, okay, so Gardner said Lenovo was at 16.7% market share compared with 14.9% a year ago. And then IDC has them at 167 compared to 15% year over year. By comparison, Hewlett Packard is at 16.3% in the second quarter. So it is only a 0.4% victory over HP, with Dell coming in third these days. Asus was making a bit of a run up the, uh, up the rankings for a bit there, and they haven't. One thing to note is that part of maybe the reason why you, did, you found this so surprising is in the U.S., Lenovo is only 10.1%. HP is 26.4% and Dell is 24.6. So they both have way bigger markets in the US, but this is a worldwide statistic, not a North American st statistic. So it's a little bit skewed if you look at it that way, because if you if you look at how people walking out of Best Buy with laptops, it's yeah. not gonna be that many Lenovo's. Right, so that's why it might actually legitimately be surprising to someone like me, yes. yep. where my background is product management, and I know for a fact that particularly when Lenovo bought IBM and they started doing ThinkPads, we, we, weren't, we weren't selling a whole lot of them. No. So... That's, yeah, because of region issues. So it, it makes sense why it was surprising and why it is likely surprising for so many people. But on a grand scale, 
it's not all that surprising. And you look at another regional difference is that Apple doesn't even register on the top PC makers overall in that sort of that top few, whereas in the US they're number three yeah. with 11.6% market share. Yep. So it's just interesting. It's just looking at different regional based statistics because every market is so different. We were actually talking today about um, Canadian buyers versus U.S. buyers and yes. how just crossing that border actually makes such a difference. Makes an enormous difference. So we, uh, we were talking GeForce Radeon market share, which we can't really reveal any numbers. But what we did find out was that particularly in Canada, AMD or ATI cards, remember traditionally that Canadian company tend to do better than they do in the U.S. And even though ATI hasn't existed for years, AMD doesn't even use the branding anymore. There's still that loyalty to, AM, to Radeon graphics cards that really doesn't make any sense. Like I, to me, it's, it's baffling because I mean, Canadian media isn't even that separate from US media. So the largest Canadian hardware review site would be hardwarecanucks.com. And I'm pretty sure I've talked to them. I know they have a ton of American readership. And then you talk to US review sites like Hard OCP and on Tech, Tom's Hardware, they get a ton of Canadian readership. So all these people are reading the same things. But then just perceiving it differently. And coming to different conclusions. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me. Same thing with something like D-Link. So in the US, Netgear is a big deal in terms of retail, like router sales. In Canada, <laughs> Not at all. No, hardly existent. D-Link is a big deal up here. Where in the U.S., D-Link is like... Who's D-Link? Who's D-Link? Yeah. Exactly. So, very, very, very strange stuff going on over there. So, um, Paul, are you talking? He's apparently in our, in our chat right now. I was, I was waiting patiently for you to finish talking. hey oh, We got Paul from Newegg TV! Hey, uh, Paul! It works. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah. The, it, for some reason, I wasn't able to talk in the waiting room, but it works in this room. So, cool. All right. So you're an avid viewer of the WAN show, right? You watch of us course. every week. Um, I, I've missed the past week, maybe two, but I, I, I usually try to jump in and either watch it live, although it's harder now to watch live because um, I'm at work when you guys broadcast. I'm um, sorry. I know. We, I know. We had to consider the international viewers. We had to, we had to, yeah, sorry. That's no, no worries. You always got to consider, consider everyone around the world. So how was work today? You guys make any interesting videos that are going to dethrone us as the top tech channel on YouTube? Uh, I, I doubt it. I mean, <laughs> you know, we always try. Uh, actually, I wasn't at work today for most of the day. I was down, uh, have you ever heard of Geek Magazine? Yeah, actually. Yeah? You, yeah. yeah, I think they're, they're somewhat newer, um, I w but I was down a, at one of their facilities because uh, they were putting together this really awesome like water-cooled system with a bunch of EK blocks, and um, it's, actually, uh, it's actually an Ivy Bridge system, but um, I, I was kind of down there shooting a little bit of that and assembling it and everything. It was pretty cool. Ooh. Now, I heard you have some big news, and I haven't talked to you about uh, saying this on the live stream yet, but uh, I got an email from you the other day. Um, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, that's fine. I, I already mentioned it on, on my channel, so um, I'm, I'm ha happy to, to share with people. Uh, mm -hmm. I just recently uh, got an offer accepted on a new house, so I'm going to be moving. Did you know this yet? No. No. All right, yeah. so yeah, Paul is a homeowner now. I know. When's totally. your moving date? Uh, actually, I'm hoping that I was emailed about that today, but I haven't checked it yet. <laughs> um, ah, yes. We're, yeah, we're, we're waiting on like the escrow paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, probably about a month. Um, What's more important? Well. Making sure you got your move-in date or calling into line of sectors? I say calling into line of sectors. Well, I'm yeah. Sure Paul agrees. I had, I had awesome. to get Razor comms to work. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Actually, here, this is a great question for you. How was the overall setup experience other than the glitch in the waiting room? Uh, okay, I'll, I, I'm not sponsored, so I can give honest feedback. Tell, tell, say whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know. I, it, it's, it seems great so far. I mean, the amount of functionality is, seems pretty expansive for a, a relatively newer voice chat app. Um, it required a restart on startup, which I never like, but, I, you know, it's got to it's gotta, it's gotta happen sometimes, I guess. Yeah, um, it's, sorry, keep going? Yeah, I mean, apart from that, it's, it seems like a 
pretty pretty functional program. All right. Well, since we've got you live with us for a little bit here, let's go ahead and have a brief talk about our next topic. So, guys, Paul hasn't been briefed on this at all. So forgive him if he uh, says anything phenomenally stupid. I'm known for that. <laughs> all right. Next topic, Titanfall tech analysis. Okay, Paul, have you heard about this yet? Let me know if you have. I, all I've been thinking about is houses. What's going on? All right. With the deluge of next-gen shooters such as Destiny, Killzone Shadowfall, and The Division content to stick to a 30 FPS baseline, it is clear that the ramp-up of environmental scale, higher grade effects, and online integration perhaps excites developers more than slick frame rates. However, given the yearly sales domination of 60 FPS franchises like Call of Duty, this isn't necessarily the next-gen reality for which some gamers had hoped, even though luminaries like John Carmack suggested that this may be the case. So here we go. Looking at the birth of the project of the... Okay, of this project, it's a surprise to find that of all the engines it could pick, this FPS, Titanfall, has gone with Valve's Source Engine. So why are they doing this? 60 FPS. 60 FPS. Competing games like Destiny, Killzone Shadowfall, and The Division are all sticking with around a 30 FPS platform. Actually, if you go to this article, I, I just tweeted it to Paul. So it's on Eurogamer. If, so if you look at my Twitter, you'll be able to see it. It's on Eurogamer. It should be fairly easy to find. It's just Digital Slick's Foundry, Twitter. Titanfall Tech Analysis. If you go to my Twitter. Like also other said, things. Other <laughs> Uh, anyways, they have a video on there of a demo, and it shows their FPS while they're going along. So it shows in super heavy action, it'll dip a little bit. But then it comes right back up, and you're sitting on that FPS line, which is really nice for shooters. Really nice for shooters. So, I mean, personally, playing a shooter at 30 frames per second... Are you friggin' kidding me? Like that's so noticeable. I mean, okay, you hear the argument online all the time. Paul, you've probably heard this. You can't see more than X number of FPS. I, True actually, or bollocks? I heard that. I believed it for some time because it seemed to make some sense. Actually, it wasn't until I saw a side-by-side -side comparison of a 60 hertz and 120 hertz monitors next to each other. It was an NVIDIA demo that I don't know if you ever saw um, where I was like, holy crap, there's yeah. a significant difference in smoothness and just like playability, especially for an FPS. Absolutely. And we're talking 60 versus 120 in this case. I mean, let me tell you guys, 30 to 60 is... Um, I mean, Paul, could you play an FPS game at 30 FPS as spoiled as you probably are? No, actually, uh, it, 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 it's one of the things when, when you... Especially if you did a lot of benchmarking, like I know Slick, you've probably encountered this. You have a standard benchmark you run, and then you go with like a lower grade card, and suddenly you have to run your, your same benchmark and like... Crisis 3 or something and play at like 15 or 18 uh, frames per second. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It's, it's so frustrating. It's, yeah, it's, it's horrible because it actually affects the results sometimes as well because what happens is you're, you're humming along at like 60, 80 FPS, getting headshots, and then all of a sudden yep. you got to play at 30. It dips to 25 because, oh, we needed this particle effect or we needed that or whatever else. And now you're missing your shots. You're not doing the same run through and you're ending up with a result that's not even representative of the game. The worst was when we were doing the, with all the new launches with 700 series, we we're doing 780, but then we did all the way down. So I think I did, uh, what was it, a 650? Oh. So I did 780, 650 Ti, so I had to pick a setting that was good for all of them, so it was pretty high. And by the time I got down to 650 Ti on Metro Last Light with pretty high settings, <laughs> it made, I had to run it so many times to be able to get to the same part in the benchmark, because it just took me longer to move. I was like, I'm, I'm kind of making the shots because I'm just spraying like crazy, but to actually get to the end of the benchmark was seriously difficult. No. Oh. You, you know, with, with Metro Last Light, you could always use the built-in benchmark. Yeah, we don't we, do that. We don't do that. We don't <laughs> stoop to your level, Paul. That is, that's like a whole topic for a whole show. I think we could just go back and forth about that. But uh, hand benchmarks versus running benchmarks by actually playing the game. You know what, Paul? Come at me, bro. <laughs> You're, this, I, don't you have a whole list of topics that you wanted to discuss? Like, is, <laughs> no, this is I'm content to discuss this one right now. Let's discuss benchmarking by actually playing the game versus running in-game benchmarks. Go. Okay. All right. Here, my my stance on the subject 
in my opinion, you've got you've got your synthetic benchmarks, which is like a piece of software that's a game you cannot play. If you take something like uh, Unigen Heaven or something like that, sure. you can't yep. go and play that game. That's fully synthetic, and I think it has its place only as a comparison, but I would agree you, you, you can't look at that and be like, oh, now I can get that frame rate when I play Heaven. Uh, apart from that, you got your your regular games that you'll play, and some of them have built-in benchmarks, some of them don't. I tend to lean towards built-in benchmarks when it comes with games that you can actually play, simply because you're never going to find, it's, typically, you're never going to find a point in a game where you can see the same number of effects, the same number of particle effects or what, whatever else is going on in the game, where you're going to have a run-through that is exactly the same every single time. Slick, you were just talking about how you play a game uh, on like a lower-end card, and it might actually affect the benchmark run if you can't see this, the, the proper frame rate or anything. You're never going to really have that situation. So he's going to turn our words around on us now. I see how this is going <laughs> to yes, be, Paul. But at the same time, in, it, it takes me quite a while to find these segments because I am looking for segments that are extremely, extremely repeatable. My That's favorite true. one is Far Cry 3 because you can play it on any range of cards as many times as you want, and my segment will always fit out the same number. I've it never had it more consistent. than 0.1 off. Yeah. So, and that's that's like, why we that's why we copy your benchmark uh, recommendation videos. So we know you've done the work, gone through, found those found those places to, to run the benchmarks. We 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 really, dude. What? Well, you, you posted the videos. Hey, Come on. on. What? You know what's funny about this though is what he just said to me. I had exactly the same conversation with SkyMTL from Hardware Canucks really? like oh, yeah. a year and a half ago when we switched from doing canned benchmarks to in-game run-throughs. I was like, dude, can you send me all your run-throughs so I can just do them? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, cool. it's time consuming just to find that spot. What, what I it hate is. is when you come to a game that you really don't enjoy playing, and then you find uh -huh. out like, oh, well, this spot that everyone's recommending to benchmark, well, you gotta play the game for like six hours to get there. And, and, like, and you know what? It, there is surprisingly little sharing of save games online. That's yeah. true. Well, I, I guess you and can. Certain games don't let, don't allow you to insert save games anymore either. Uh, Metro, we did it so quickly that there wasn't a lot out there, so I kind of had to do it myself. And then, with Metro, I'm not trying to just like play the game and have a good time. So I'm on the easiest possible setting. I'm jumping around and running through levels as fast as I can, going, "Where's a benchmarkable segment? Where's a benchmarkable segment? There's only ever like two enemies. How am I supposed to do this?" <laughs> and it took me so long, and I finally found that one hallway that I could go through, and it ended up working out. But that took—you remember that day, probably? That took an incredible amount of time. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the best thing t for me about all of this is that I get to pay him to play <laughs> games that he's not even enjoying playing, like. I went back, actually. I went back, deleted my save file completely, started from the beginning, upped the difficulty, played slower, and it was a really good game. <laughs> but when I'm just trying to sprint through it, like, I'm not having a good time. It's not the same. You're not playing the game. You're just, like, scanning for benchmarkable segments. All right, Paul, we got one more thing that we want to talk to you about, unless you have some additional topics. So I don't know if you've seen this yet. I know you've been house shopping, which I've done before and is a total nightmare, so I can understand if you haven't checked it it's out. It's time consuming. Uh, but this is Hemless, the beautiful and secure messenger. How do you feel about using something like SMS or using something like Facebook chat where someone else has access to your data or even potentially owns your data, like Facebook's That's terms Facebook. of yep. service would have you accept, um, compared to this, which is an encrypted service that seeks to hide your information from anyone who would be looking at it? Uh, I, I heard you discussing this a little bit earlier in the, in the stream, and um, I, I think on a, from a personal perspective, I would say that I, I, I don't think I do anything that is, you know, incriminating or, or that sort of thing. However, at the same time, I'm, I'm very much a proponent of uh, free speech, of people being able to maintain their privacy and all that together. So. Um, I'm I'm all for making use of software to work around the more draconian types of, of things that uh, that uh, whether you're talking about a government agency or whether you're talking about a software developer has put in place. Like uh, I, I'm not into that. I think people's data should be private if they want it to be private. Um, if you're posting on Facebook, obviously you don't want it to be private. So you, you know it, it's 
it's pretty easy to tell when somebody says something to somebody else and, and they want it to be public. Usually they'll post it in a public place. If, if people are just having private discussions, I don't think the government or I don't think any any uh, company should should have access to that. It should be private information. And this is all fine and good from like sort of a, um, a sort of a well-informed individual perspective. But I still remember being blown away the first time I saw someone post a Facebook picture of their new driver's license, holding it up like this, with mm. all the information available right there on Facebook for absolutely everyone to see. They didn't even have a private profile. Anyone could see their profile. So do you worry about the people who don't even read terms of service? Um, and how do we protect those guys? Like, would you personally install this application and switch over to it and encourage all of your friends and relatives to switch over to it because they don't necessarily have the wherewithal to protect their own privacy? Uh, you know, I, th I think there's a pretty big variance in, in people's willingness to, to ignore, like, propriety or intelligence uh, sharing of their own personal information. I mean, there's, uh, you know, the, the U.S. has tons and tons of laws and litigation that goes on and stuff like that, and it's all around like, oh, well, this person, you know, it goes back to the classic, like, oh, this lady spilled her coffee from McDonald's on her lap and it was too hot and she got burnt, so she, you know, sued McDonald's and won or something yeah. like that. I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of personal personal responsibility that is involved, and I think if you if you forget that element of it, it becomes easier to try to, to try to protect everything. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely if if there's friends or relatives who communicate a lot and, and maybe aren't as tech savvy, um, and it's something that uh, you know they just install and use, and they don't have to worry about configuring or something like that. It's, uh, I mean, this is the first time I've I've heard of this particular bit of software, but uh, it seems like it would be a reasonable way to, to keep people keep people's information private from their video they are trying to make it the, one of their whole things is it's not secure if it's impossible to use so one of their whole things is it's supposed to be very easy to use if you're introducing it to someone who's not very tech savvy it should be very easy to set up and control because in their opinion if it becomes a chore people end up don't, not using it and right. then it's not secure because you're not using it it's just like the whole thing where if you make a password so long they have to write it down yeah well, that's useless now. That's not that secure of a password because if someone sees this piece of paper, you're screwed. So, like, they they are going with a very simple uh, solution. So hopefully that works out for them. Uh, and I and I definitely like software like that that makes itself accessible. Um, I mean, yeah. that's why Apple's popular, right? Yeah, yeah. That much. That much is very true. All right, so uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully we'll Thanks, have Paul. you on again at some point. Guys, do add, I think it's, what is it, at Paul Hardware on Twitter, correct? Yeah, the Twitter, if you guys don't add me, is Paul Hardware without the S. If you add the S, you'll find an Ace Hardware that's somewhere in the Midwest, I think. Uh, I then, actually did that at one point, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I should contact them and see if they want to give me their Twitter handle or something. But uh, <laughs> then I, uh, if you don't mind me plugging my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Paul's Hardware. I've been trying to post more videos there. Once I get my house, I'm going to hopefully be doing a ton more. Um, and then I also awesome. promised Kyle I would post, I, I would plug his channel too. Follow Kyle. Yep. Uh, I actually haven't reached out to Kyle yet because people demanded Paul, but uh, we will definitely ask Kyle to join us on the WAN show at some point. So again, thank you very much for joining us and take care. All right, guys. See you later. Have a good one. It's right. Awesome Sauce News, right? Cut awesome channel? Sauce News. Right. YouTube.com slash Awesome Sauce News. I think we cut Paul off there, but we're good to go now. That's all right. Oh. I'm sorry, still Paul. Here. No, I'm going to leave now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks, Paul. See you later. All right. So why don't we do, you know what? First, what I want to do is introduce our next call-in topic. And then jump to something and else. And then yeah. we'll jump to something else. So our next call-in topic will be from the Titanfall technical analysis on the nextweb.com. I would like to discuss next-gen console. I want console people calling in, not PC people. We heard from the PC people, that other PC guy that was with us a moment ago. Console people, would you rather have more realism to the game, more details, more effects, more um, expressive facial expressions, or would you rather have butter smooth 60 FPS 
and be willing to sacrifice all that other stuff. I want to hear from you guys, but in the meantime, let's head into the info leak about the Radeon HD 9970. Right, okay, so one thing, that, the main thing that actually jumped out at me about this article that was posted on our forum is that Sapphire is designing seven, I think it's seven different coolers? <laughs> Which but, is crazy, but, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But for, hold on first, I want to thank Soliloquies for posting this on the forum. There you go, okay, go ahead. But people are speculating that the, the designing seven different coolers isn't necessarily attached to 90, 9970. Okay, So go on. what people are speculating is that this could possibly be a line of cards that they're designing these coolers for. Okay. Not necessarily that it's so... So there's the leak about 9970... But people are thinking that there might be more in there. It could be a it could be a big release, not necessarily just one graphics card, which is interesting. Well, what AMD has done for the last couple of generations is they have released rather than what Nvidia does, where less so with 700 series, but more so with 600 series and 500 series, where they'd release one card, then another one, then another one. AMD, boom, 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 yeah. is going rapid fire with that, what they've typically done. Which is why I'm not surprised about the speculation of seven coolers. Maybe it's more than one card. So we could be looking at 9970, 9950, 9870, 9850, 9, It's not necessarily seven different cards. 9750, but okay, right? It could also be that Sapphire and AMD are so confident about this card that they're, they want to have a toxic version available and a regular overclock dual X version and a reference card and, and maybe one or two other cards or something. I don't know. It's all speculation, but it's just interesting. So the speculation is that it'll feature a 12 layer PCB. So basically the more layers there are on a PCB, the more electrically advanced the card typically is because each layer can carry different signals around the card. So the more componentry you're building onto it, the more typically, um, the more layers that you will typically need. It has also been suggested that, ah uh, yes, that even though AMD outright said earlier this year, no graphics cards this year, uh, it looks like the rumor is that this will be coming before the year's end, and it's possible that NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture, so their next-gen architecture might be coming sooner than expected as well. Which is crazy. Which is bizarre to me, because we could be looking at Kepler refresh, Maxwell architecture within a period of what, like six months? That's actually nuts. And people have been talking about for a while that PC gaming is still climbing. Yeah. Especially with indie games coming out. And there's a lot of indies now developing on platforms like Unity, which are not like low-end platforms. You right, we're not talking World stuff. of Goo anymore. No. So there is indie, indie guys out there releasing really intense games, and there's indie players out there releasing stuff that is going to have Oculus Rift support. Now, if you know Oculus Rift, that's running 3D. So you can't just run some terrible graphics card. That's true. So That's going to dramatically increase the hardware requirements. So... In, this is all stuff I've thought about. I haven't read this anywhere, but I'm thinking graphics re, uh, graphics guys are getting ready for a push in graphics purchases. And not only that, but on top of everything you just said, next-gen consoles. Next-gen consoles. Finally, the bar will be raised for these upcoming titles. Plus, on the PC, you're going to want to experience it with virtual reality and stereo 3D and on top of all of that stuff. So, while we had a lull there for a while, Every angle is now hammering PC and performance. And finally, we're seeing resolutions increase as well. Yep. With, like, those cheapo Korean monitors. Thank goodness for cheapo Korean monitors, because if not for that, I think we'd have been stuck at 1080p forever. So, and thank time. goodness for Apple, because if Steve Jobs hadn't come back from the dead to invent the higher-than-1080p 1080p resolution display... Because Apple makes everything. Well, the... the, the Okay, I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to go too far into this. But it's not Apple inventing it. It's just the fact that they were the only one with the balls to <laughs> bring it to market. To yeah. prove that consumers were willing to pay for more resolution and retina. And for Apple to bring the branding to it. It's like, you're not going to be able to tell my mom, well, it has more pixels per inch. She's going to be like, what? Who cares? What's a pixel? <laughs> What's an inch? 
Actually, no. My mom's my mom's pretty smart. She knows like, what an inch is. Whoa! I think she probably knows what a pixel is. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so. gonna defend your mom right there. Yeah. No. No. My mom's my mom's cool. My mom's cool. So. But yeah, like I'm. Just a few months ago, we were talking about how we were worried about PC performance and how. No one was going to have a big, powerful machine because everything was going to be streamed down. And then it's like, okay, every angle is now doesn't care anymore. There's Oculus Rift. There's Omni. Yep. There's full body suits where you can feel stuff. Um, that did that get funded? I think their Kickstarter's over now, right? Did not get funded. Didn't make it. Bummer. But there's already ones that exist. Right, okay. They're not the first ones to do it. And then the Razer thing, I don't remember what it's called, but the Razer thing where you hold the controllers. Uh, oh, crap. It's a motion controller thing. Yeah, they're motion. The Hydra. Hydra, there yeah. we go. Razer Hydra, Oculus Rift, full body suit thing. Like, all this stuff is going to bring tons of people to computers. Because yes, it'll... because we already know that both Microsoft and Sony have talked about extending the life cycle of console hardware. And we already know what the hardware in PS4 and Xbox One is going to be, and it is nowhere near capable of doing any of that stuff. Not even close. So it'll be, what, 10 years before a console has the capability that we're getting right now on the PC. And that's so beast, and it's going to be really hard to run. Right. So people are going to buy new graphics cards. Speaking of hardcore bashing on console, I asked for console gamers to uh, tell us what they think about 30 FPS versus 60 FPS. Demos, you're on. Go. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. A little bit quiet, hey, but we can hear you. Thank you so much. Um, first time calling in and first time on live, which is awesome. Hi from New Zealand. Hi, New Zealand. Hi, New Zealand. Um, about the consoles, it's going to be tough to run games at more than 30 frames per second, most, with their new, uh, the new games coming out and the new hardware that's kind of pretty average. So what would you prefer? Would you rather that they just take like a last generation title and run it at 60, or like in terms of quality, and run it at 60 FPS, or would you rather that they build a truly next generation engine and settle for 30 FPS on the console? What would you rather play? Well, I'm a spoiled PC gamer, so I'd always go for the, the 60 frames per second any day of the week, but for sort of the, the typical console gamers, they'd sort of be fine with the 30 frames. Like I had a friend who played on his PS3, and he would compensate when he was playing Call of Duty for the lag, like he would actually move his mouth, uh, move, move his stick forward of people to shoot them, because then when the console caught up, it would shoot that person, it was like, that it was, was pretty crazy. That was really common in 1.6, that's the why they had lag compensating hitboxes. Yep. That makes sense. So basically, console is like 10 years behind, again, already. <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, but like... Um, with the, the console exclusives, like, if GTA V doesn't come to PC, you know, until next year, I might be forced to have to buy a console. You know, that's another... Okay, right. So from screen. that perspective, single-player game, GTA V, you want it to be beautiful, or do you want it to run at 60 FPS? Or at, yeah, 60 FPS. 60 FPS, because I want to be able to play it. I mean, the graphics are, uh, need to be good, but I need to be able to play it. I mean, 30 FPS is pretty hard to play when you're just a spoiled PC rig, you know? So this is... PC user, though, no compromises. So this is an interesting point, though, is have we gotten to the point where graphics are basically good enough and we'd rather improve in other ways, such as stereo 3D, virtual reality, or other immersion-improving techniques? Do you find a game immersive enough already in terms of the game engine? For me, Half-Life 2 was already at that point. Half-Life yeah. 2 was immersive enough that it was believable for me. Honestly, think back to games you played when you were a kid. Harvest Moon looks like... I'm a lot older than you. I played, like, Super Mario <laughs> World when I was a kid. Think back to any game that wasn't a 2D platformer when you were a kid. Yeah, they, they didn't exist. I'm okay. older than you. I know, but you're not that much older than me. You were still kind of a kid. Okay, so, like, uh, Final Fantasy VII sure. was the first non-2D sure. game I played. It was still immersive, was it not? Yes. You use part of your imagination. Yep. Graphics can help, but I don't personally believe they're required. I like beautiful looking games, and I love maxing out my settings and having it look amazing, and looking at my screen and being like, wow, that looks so good. But then at the same time, I appreciate and love these old classic games that look terrible. Chrono Trigger is still awesome. Yeah. It's terrible. There's, there's a ton game. of old games yeah. um, that just look so... They look so good in your memory. 
They don't necessarily look so good in real life. And it doesn't matter that much. Now, we can all appreciate great looking graphics, and I do really, really want game developers, especially with stuff like Oculus Rift, actually what I'm hoping is that game engines push harder with Oculus Rift. Because you feel like you're in there, it's going to be actually harder to get the immersion down. Because everything's going to have to feel real. That is a good point. The expectation from the viewer or the gamer will be much higher. Because you can sit back away from a computer screen and put yourself into that world. But when that world comes to you and you are being put in that world... That ups the ante. That ups the ante. It's got to look better. So, Interesting. Yeah. Jumped up kind of a little bit away from the console topic here, but... Yeah. Okay, no, so oh, hold on. Was our is Sorry. our last caller gone now? Uh, maybe. Not sure. You're oh, that's wind. That's wind. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much for that call, and uh, let's thank bring you. on the next caller. Hi. I think that's him. Oh no, he's gone now. <laughs> there we go. All right, Matt, you're up. Mute your stream and use comms to communicate. Tell us what you think. 30 FPS, better details. 60 FPS, not as good details. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Go for it. Um, well, I do play on a console. Sorry not very that. much as of recently because I did get a, uh, did get a pretty good gaming PC. But I would rather have the more frames per second. It's just the smoothness that I can get on a PC is just better. Tell me something. Did you prefer smooth frame and that's rates about it. so much before you went PC? So on a console, did you notice the difference before you had the better experience? Or were you content to kind of sit there and not be aware that there was something better out there? I was kind of always aware because my friend always played on PC, but it's it's just kind of gone down to what is better for gaming, and it's just non-comparable. Better frame rate for me is better for gaming. Of course, that may not be the same for everybody, though. To 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 play a little bit of devil's advocate here, sure, because we've got a lot of. We asked for a lot of console colors. We're getting a lot of PC colors. So to play a little bit of the other side, sometimes, at least for me, in single-player games, even if it drops my frame rate a little bit, say if it's a really, really hard game to run. Sure. I will put max settings because it'll look good. Something like Skyrim, for example, where Skyrim it's the with immersive tons of experience. Mods. Yeah, because Skyrim normally isn't that hard to kinda run. Kind of looks like Skyrim, that. Yeah, Skyrim with 100 mods looking at like one of the best games you've ever seen is really hard to run and will drop your frames. As long as it's not at like a ridiculously low level, if I can kind of feel it every once in a while, I'm actually kind of okay with that. Because it's a single player game. The second you include anyone else in the game, whether it's co-op or multiplayer, I'll go for performance instantly. And All right. this is a multiplayer game. Thanks, Matt. Great call. Era, you're up. Thank you. Hey, this is getting smoother, eh? A little bit smoother, yep. Yeah. I think people got to get the hang of clicking. We, to... we got to we got to release a tutorial video. Yep, we're this gonna have a tutorial video power. now that we've got things working properly. And Era is on. Uh, can you hear me? We can. Go for it. Uh, all right. So I I play console like ninety five percent of the time because my friends play console. It's just like that. And uh, it honestly it depends on what type of game you play. Like Slick said, if you play Skyrim or something like that, you want to be more immersed in the game, uh, so you choose with the higher settings. But like if I was playing something like Call of Duty, uh, I want the higher FPS. So uh, like you said, if it drops down, sometimes you're missing those shots or whatever. So uh, I like the smoother experience. Sure, 30 frames per second is, in my opinion, uh, it's uh, which it's playable. But it's not as playable or as smooth as so on. Uh, I'd like or something I'd like to play. So tell me this: you're probably the first actual console gamer who's called in. For a single-player gaming experience, if the dev came to you and said, "Look, we're gonna use Frostbite 6, or we're gonna use Source Engine," 
So we're talking dramatically different looks to the games. Do you prefer we use the lower grade engine? It's going to be the exact same gameplay either way. Let's say it's a single player game. Do you prefer we use the lower grade engine or the higher grade engine for your gaming experience personally? For a purely single player game, I prefer to use the higher engine. But then for multiplayer, it goes the other way? Yeah, but for multiplayer, when you're playing competitively, yeah. All right, I think we're going to have to let you go because your uh, your mic's got a little right, bit of a uh, buzzing issue there. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think he's nope. powering it with a Tesla. Right. That's, that's my theory. <laughs> but thank you very much for calling in. We appreciate it. We're going to do one more caller on this topic if we have someone. Guys, do we have one more? If so, let's go. All right, mental guy is coming in. This is fun. I like doing these live calls. I think we should split the shows, though. I think we should at some point. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do like an interaction show. Yeah, and we'll do like a news show. And the interaction show, we maybe have a, have a topic, but in between the topics, do Twitter questions, and then the live show, we just cover our topics every week. Yeah, because especially with how we've been doing the live stream now, we have a ton of topics. Yeah, we're gonna have to like hammer out on topics and then we're gonna end the show probably after this uh after this call in all right mental guy you're on go for it all right can you guys hear me yes yep. we can all right um i was thinking about maybe just having a happy medium you know like 45 okay. fps and you know like not too great not too little but i i think that would be like the best all around to do that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't know if there's an engine that fits in that slot right now. But if you ran it as a 60 FPS game that realistically was only running around 40 F 45 FPS most of the time, that's okay. Yep, and this, and this has room for people to make an engine that fits really well in that spot. Because right now you've got the two. You've got one that runs at 30. Yep. And you've got Source that runs really well at 60 and dips sometimes. If someone makes one that's pretty consistent at 45 and looks a little bit better than uh, Source, but doesn't look quite as good as the other one, and performs a little bit worse than the other one, but performs, yeah, I don't know. I mean, performs a little bit better, but then performs worse than Source. Like, yeah, balancing it is important. That's what happens. That's why a game on release for a console will not look as good as a game that releases four years later. The and console to me, didn't get better. The difference between 30 and 45 FPS and the difference between 45 and 60 is much more dramatic. Like going, it's like going from 30 to 60 compared to 60 to 120. 30 FPS to me is nearly unplayable. Whereas when I step it up and I can get a little higher, I can get 40 or 45 or 50, I can really feel that. Oh yeah. Whereas maybe 50 to 60, eh, blind taste test, I might, I might get it wrong once out of every eight times. The scale down is quite noticeable. Like going from 15 to 20 is such a big difference. Yes. Such a huge difference. But then going from 55 to 60, it doesn't, even just hearing it, it doesn't sound like the same Yeah, scale. no, it's just It not. is, but it doesn't seem like it. All right, Mental Guy, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to the Foldy team. All yeah. right, yes, shout out to this the folding team. This guy apparently gives Whaler a run for his money. Oh, wow. Which is like super beast mode. Okay, so for those of you who don't know folding at home, basically you calculate the way that proteins fold, help cure diseases, help make the world a better place. All it costs is having some computing power to spare and dedicating it to folding. Check out our folding team on our forum. Also check out our Boink team on our forum. I always call it Bonic. Yeah, it's Boink. That, but that's wrong. Uh, check out our Boink team on our forum. They're both really, really good communities, and they would both really appreciate your help. All right, thanks, Mental. Take care. All right, take it easy, guys. All right, so we're going to uh, move on. So let's do some more topics here. I don't think we're going to be able to hit every topic, but we can talk about some of them on the after party. Sure. So let's talk about the Japanese exoskeleton, because I think that kind of both of us geeked out over that. Check this out, you guys. <laughs> So this was posted by Top War Gamer on the forum. I'm actually going to play this video very briefly here, just so that you guys can get some idea of what's going on. Video is often like the stream. Hmm? Video is often like the stream. Seems like we're still okay. 
All right, so here's an exoskeleton. Basically, they've got a girl. I mean, the funny thing about this is they're only planning to make five. Um, they're gonna cost what was one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I think it's one hundred twenty-five. I've got it in here. I don't remember exactly where it was. And they spend the entire promo video. I'm just gonna mute him. Basically, making fun of the product. So they they come up with all these use case scenarios for it that are just ridiculous. Like things like, oh, here, if I can find the one where he's like, yeah, your, your wife in the kitchen will keep one of these next to her so that she never has to get her hands dirty chopping vegetables ever again. No one will notice even if running in town like this and it is possible to sprint like a ninja. I mean, obviously they know this person is not sprinting like a ninja right now. And like... This is pointless because he's obviously drinking the water with his hand and the exoskeleton is just like chilling there. And then there's one part where they're like, oh, and if you add the windscreen to the exoskeleton, it takes this girl and makes her much cuter. And she's making like yeah. a face before that. I mean, this one's neat. Picking up an egg. Very cool demo. You guys got to check this out. Um, so what's your take on this? I guess if anyone's gonna do this, it's got to be the Japanese, right? Uh, this, what's on screen right now, is what I don't understand. Making fun of the product a little bit, but showing some serious parts. Okay, that makes sense. You're, you're showing humili- like it's, Here it is, the housewife thing. Yeah. <laughs> like... See, but that's kind of funny. Because they're showing, okay, maybe you don't use it in all situations. But being funny about it, which is cool. I don't understand Scarface. Yeah. Oh, here it is. This is a typical high school girl. This is a high school girl seen through the large canopy. <laughs> As you can see, the large canopy fully uses its ability to make the girl appear cute. <laughs> just, just like, friggin' like bizarro land. Like what this company is thinking. I mean, obviously they're more focused on what's the future of this technology as opposed, and they, you know, they're going to get some funding out of managing to build anything like this. Yep. But uh, just to me, this promo video was very strange. It's, so it's kind of because one thing that you said earlier today, which made a ton of sense, is they're like... I, I only said one thing earlier today that made a ton of sense. <laughs> I said one of the things, I think. I don't remember no, you didn't, but it's okay. Anyways, I can't find it here. Oh, there it is. $124,000 each. They only have five of them. What well, you said earlier today, they probably sold them already. Yeah, that, okay, that's true. This is probably just that. a marketing push of some form just to be like, look at what we've done to show themselves off as a company it might not have anything to do with actually selling these things. Right. They're very possibly already sold. I probably wouldn't build five of these at $125,000 a pop if I didn't already have some idea who was going to buy them. And if there's anywhere that someone's going to buy them, it's probably Japan. <laughs> uh, two things that we got to cover before the stream ends. we got to do Build Logs of the Week. we got two awesome ones this week. And I want to give a quick shout-out to a bunch of people on the forum that are doing a sizzling summer giveaway um i can try and get a link for it it should be pretty easy to find on the forum there's a few things you gotta do post something in there and if you post some original content like photos or video you get a few extra entries but a whole bunch of people on the forum got together and donated a whole bunch of games and they're going to be giving them away for free to random people that win this contest it's pretty cool it's not an official line sex tips contest but it's really big so i thought i'd give it a shout out yeah, it's happening on the Linus Tech Tips forum, so there you go. Sizzling Summer Giveaway. This is the thread from the forum. It's uh, started by Heine Goat in collaboration with a whole bunch of other guys, including Joel the Zombie. So, guys, check it out. Apparently, it's 52-plus games now at this point. Which is beast. Now, I want to talk about this. I can't believe we didn't get to this yet. China ends the ban on game consoles. Here we go, guys. So this was submitted by Top War Gamer as well. Great work, man. You submitted two of our live stream topics today. All right. So, so this ban had gone on for 13 years, and it has finally ended. Um, all the games and content in the games and content that will be on the consoles has to be government approved. And the consoles that will be sold in China have to be manufactured in Shanghai, not industry centers like Henan and Shenzhen. I hope I didn't say those wrong. Uh, but they have to be manufactured in Shanghai, which is interesting because, <coughs> uh, sorry, minimum wage and stuff is higher in Shanghai, I believe. I know that cost of living and everything is higher, so for someone to live there, you're probably going to have to pay them more. 
So that just kind of makes sense either way. So China's basically trying to move away from low-cost manufacture of the goods in China, in China for Chinese people. So what we may even end up with if we have a higher caliber of worker in these factories that are paying more, like, I mean, okay, come on. If you're Microsoft or Sony and you're opening up a new factory in China, it's, it only makes sense that you would offer your current employees who are in lower pay areas of China the opportunity to move there and work in the new factory so you have your most experienced people you have at least some experienced staff running this new factory. Especially people that have already been making that exact console. Yes. So uh, this is China's strategy then to increase the wages of the people manufacturing game consoles. That's interesting. That's in a completely roundabout sort of bizarre way. Um, and I mean, the reality of it is, from Microsoft and Sony's perspective, it's like, how ticked off am I that I have to build in Shanghai? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm mad. I'm, but, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And the reality of it is, yes, there were gray market consoles going into China, but I think the demand for, I mean, you look at the demand for PC gaming in China, the demand for console gaming in China will be huge. Will be huge. They needed a new factory anyway. So I'm mad, but I'm not that mad, but I'm still mad. Pretty more stoked than mad. Yeah, at least I get to sell that. Huge market. Yeah. Yes, there's an enormous new market to tap into. So that that yeah, that is some huge news that landed this week. Very exciting. All right. Let's do build logs of the week, shall we? Sure. I've got a link to it right there. All right. We're gonna probably have to download it again because because Google Docs doesn't handle PowerPoint nearly as well as it probably could. Hopefully that'll change at some point. That would be really nice. And guys, we're going to do one more Twitter Blitz to cap off the live stream. So hit Linus Tech on Twitter with your Q&A, and we're going to burn through that as quickly as we possibly can here. This is non, non-topic Q&A. Just go yep. for gold. Just go for it. Okay, if I could download this, that would be phenomenally helpful. One Twitter tweet that's on the screen right now that I know is not on our screen uh, it says, I think plus 25 FPS is playable because I will immerse myself and compensate for anything. Quality greater than performance, respectively. I find that this whole balance is very personal. Depends on who you are. Before, I built my own computer. Way, way back in the day. I used to play massive, massively multiplayer online games. And sometime in big fights. Like, okay. Um, in WoW, way back in the day. Raiding MC with 40 people. I had another vent window open where one of the guys I was playing with could talk to me directly because my game would go anywhere between 1 and 3 FPS and I was main tanking. So, so I was able to deal with that and when I got up to, I think it was like 15 FPS because I went down to some random store and bought a new super cheapo graphics card, um, I was stoked. I thought the game was running super well. I thought it was awesome compared to what I had used in the past. Now that... I actually have like my own nice system. The compromise is different. If I'm running at 15 FPS, that's gross. That's completely gross and I feel it a lot more than I used to feel it because I was going up before. Now that would be going down. So depends on who you are, depends on what you're dealing with. That's why Linus says he he does he notices the difference but 30 FPS is not playable for Linus. He wants more 45 plus and honestly to be completely honest he wants more 60 plus FPS if I'm gonna sit and play games I have so precious little time to do it I don't want to be looking at a slideshow yeah so he's gonna go with crazy 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 performance um, for me if it's a multiplayer game crazy 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 performance um, we've got the slideshow up now so I think we're gonna switch over all right here we go so we have two builds this week, check it out. Here's the first one. This is from Akula on the forum. This was featured by EK, yep. which was really cool. So you can see there's, uh, here, I'll move my mouse around. Here we go. So we EK can find stuff, stuff everywhere. Yeah. EK blocks on the cards. What cards are these again? This I think those are 680s. Four way 680s, if, if I, I think we discussed this before. Yep, 680s. Three, three way GTX 680. Oh, three way. Pardon me. And then, oh, just gorgeous liquid cooling on the memory. And, you know, and... people have talked to me in the past about wa water cooling memory not being worth it. No, not no. necessarily. Yeah, it's totally it not worth it. it looks awesome. Looks great. Yeah. 
Love so, it. More power to you. This build looks amazing. Uh, on both of these, the second slide will show the person's name and the name of their build, just so you guys know. Yeah, and you guys can check out the sticky in the build logs uh, section of the Linus Tech Tips forum so you can see any of these rigs. That's just, I, I wanted to show a different angle of both these builds. And that, Gorgeous. that shows off the three card system a lot easier. See, look at this tubing on the itself. back here. Look how clean that is. Just everything's so clean about this build. Just tight. Really, really well done. Love it. All right, next up, this. Little mm. bit of a different angle. <laughs> this monstrosity managed to be a build of the week. Why? Tell us about the specs, Slick. We've got an Intel Pentium 3, 1000 megahertz, uh, 133 megahertz bus, 256 kilobytes cache, awesome, awesome processor. You got 512 megabytes of Kingston RAM. Kingston memory. Woo. Wow. Beast. <laughs> Is that a Voodoo graphics card? Voodoo 5500? 64 meg AGP? 300 watt power supply. 300 whole watts? 300 They could fit watts. 300 watts up here? Yeah, it's crazy. That's how it's... That's outstanding. I mean, look at this heat sink on the north bridge. Look at this heat sink on the south bridge. This is before they even needed a heat sink on the south bridge. <laughs> you, you've got one 40 gigabyte Mac store 7200 RPM drive. You've got two 60 gigabyte Seagate 7200 drives, and that's some serious storage there, storage there, guys. Yeah, I mean that's like a whole 160 gigabytes total. It has an IO Mega zip drive in addition to its floppy drive. So this is a really cool build log from Victor B. This is an ultimate Y2K gaming build. So it's a retro gaming build. Sometimes older games don't necessarily run 100% correctly on newer machines, even with all the sort of compatibility modes in the world. So if you truly want to play retro games, sometimes this is the only way to do it. And Victor B has gone all out. Um, one thing I want to th throw on there is our, our little feed of us was covering up the text part. So if you want to see his video build log of this build, you can go to youtube.com slash Victor Bart. Victor Bart, yeah. You can go to youtube.com slash Victor Bart to check that out on the forum. It's Ultimate Year 2000 Gaming Build by Victor B. This thing's awesome. One thing that I noticed that I really liked was that he had a, the speaker built into the case, hooked in. Yeah, right there, that one. That's something you never see anymore. I know. When's the last time someone released a case that had a speaker? I actually don't remember. It's like a, so some of them include a little speaker dongle that you can plug in. Although I, I haven't never even do it seen anymore. that for a long time. Uh, some of them still do. Really? Yeah, yeah I've seen it. Hmm. I, might, I unbox a lot of I cases. I might not pay attention. Yeah, you probably don't know. If I see it, you I probably care. just pitch it. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not going to use it. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for the live the WAN show. <laughs> I was like, oh, will well, he get it? Will he do it? B roll never went and got us food. That freaking guy. I brought blueberries. Do you have blueberries? They're here. All right, They're blueberries. Like right there. Oh, rocket. No, no, no. Well, oh, those are for after. Right, I'm not allowed to eat on the WAN show. That's a new policy. So, guys, okay. thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the after party. We're going to be starting it up right away because the setup is done. So, all we got to do is. Flip a switch and we're ready to rock. You jinxed it now. No, no, don't worry. I got this. All right. All right. I got this. We could go after party like... Oh, oh, oh. You're getting called out. We said we were going to do a Twitter blitz. We said we were going to do a Twitter blitz. We did. Thank you for that. Twitter blitz you, time now. Do I got you. Do... Oh, oh, man. Okay. Do you think GTA 5 will be released on PC later? Well, there's been... There was a petition. Spring of 2014. They said they were going to do I'm something. I'm pretty sure it's pretty official that it's going to be spring of 2014. 60 FPS could push competitive on consoles, which would be nice to see. That is a very good point, because as much as you might be able to play at 30 FPS, I don't think you can play competitively. At least not with well, anyone who's running the, at it. Everyone's on the same platform. So yes, you could, and people have in the past. That's I'm like saying, saying everyone has their legs tied together so you can have a competitive race. I'm trying to, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Well, you suck at it. <laughs> Someone says, like, I bet you I didn't agree. see this. We did. Take ah. off your short, Slick. I don't know shorts. if they mean shirt or shorts, but either of them would be very desirable. <laughs> four-way GTX SLI Titan better than four-way SLI 690. You can't have four-way at 690. It doesn't well, work that way. Well, well, okay, two 690s. Yeah. Either, okay, Titan works and is better. So there. But isn't it twice as expensive? 
Forbes. Two GTX 760s showed interesting benchmarks versus a Titan. Yep, seen that. Um, but you're still going to have micro stuttering, so it can run whatever benchmarks it wants. But Titan will deliver a smoother experience a lot of the time. Titan is incredibly smooth. It's hard for us to show that kind of stuff, but Titan is incredibly smooth. With a multi-screen setup, do all monitors have to have the same refresh rate? No, but it depends. For example, in NVIDIA Surround, yes. In AMD's iFinity, no. That's one of the reasons why we say that AMD's multi-monitor support is better than NVIDIA's at this point in time. Is Powerline good for streaming TV? Yes. Someone says, if I find the game enjoyable, I couldn't care less about FPS. Good point. What do you think about the US government considering professional League of Legends players pro athletes now? I stuttered there because I was floored by that. What do you think? Honestly, it's booming so much that if this helps it, I'm okay with that. Okay. When will the price for 4K come down? Soon. It is. It's already coming down. It's already down. coming down. It's, it's dropping like a rock. Man. Are cheap power supplies worth the risk? Go. You can get pretty cheap power supplies that are not quote-unquote cheap power supplies. Okay, but answer his question. No. Yeah, no. Thank you. <laughs> One you more can, answer. Yeah. Someone asks, what are the most quiet keyboard switches? Probably like the crappiest rubber domes on like a notebook. That's a uh, scissor switch. Yeah, scissor, scissor switch. switch. I overclocked my 7950 to 1200 core clock. How safe is it to run that max temp 62? Go for it. No, you're fine, man. Do you think consoles will ever overtake PC hardware wise? Well, they already have. Oh, hard hardware like wise. spec wise? Yeah. No. No. I, we know this for a fact pretty much. Not going to happen. I'm really confused. Should I go 3570K or 4670K Haswell and a Radeon 7770? If you don't have that 7770 already, uh, buy a better graphics card and go with like an AMD chip or something. Get a 6300 or something like that because yep. you are not benefiting from that beefy CPU. All right, gaming headset. Which headset would you recommend with good sound and decent mic quality? <sighs> You're asking probably the two worst guys in the world this question because neither of us would really recommend a gaming headset because we both tend to shop in price ranges that are above gaming headsets. So, we, yeah, we spend too much money on our audio equipment. So what we do is when you get to that price range, your options are standalone headphones and a standalone mic. Yes. Because you're above the possible price range. Yeah. yeah, however, there are some gaming headsets that, aside from audio quality, I can say positive things about. The Carcarius is extremely comfortable and lightweight. The Vengeance 2000 is wireless on a budget. And, and you can get the Dolby software. Comes with Dolby. Mind you, Razer has their new... I was just going to say. Surround for everyone software. Which you can software. get on any headphones. These are actually reasonably comfortable, considering that I've only worn them twice. I have to wear them for two plus hours at a time. And... I mean, Slick was complaining about the headband last time, but I personally find it mushy enough. I don't think it bothers I me. I just, I come from a super insanely spoiled position. Right, okay. I have 595s and I have Bear Dynamic Custom 1 Pro, but which both have insanely... You may problems. not remember this, but your 595s were probably uncomfortable as balls when you first got them. My 555s were. I put on a new pair of them and I was like, what? <laughs> And then I put on my old ones, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah they do have to break in, and that could definitely be something here. I, and I think I, the fact that you're wearing them sideways Exactly, because it's bad. making the top band yes. dig into my head. Because yeah. when I wore them last week, I didn't wear them sideways, and it was perfect. And this week, yeah, I can feel it more. And you seem to be able to do this while you're on the live stream, but it just makes me yell. So I don't want to do that. Lower SP like FPS, this. not as noticeable with a controller as a mouse. That's true. There are other latency introducing members of the, the chain, such as the wireless controller, the high input leg that's typical of most TVs that might make it less noticeable. Very good point. Would you, uh, when under a budget for a decent GPU, would you go NVIDIA or AMD? Under a budget? 7770. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There's, see, lately there's a lot of perks that you get. Like, uh, on the side perks with NVIDIA. You get GeForce Experience, Shadow Plays on the way. Oh, that's um, true. There's all that other kind of stuff. But then you got to pay to play. But, exactly. And he's asking cheap performance GPU. Yeah. He's not asking for the perks. Then there's so, AMD. Yeah. You, there's, there's more than just the benchmarks that you're looking at lately. Do you agree with the bad publicity that Microsoft is getting for the Xbox One? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they did some extremely unpopular stuff, and they executed it totally the wrong way.
They only took it back once they were about to be burnt at the stake. Yeah. It's like, no, please don't, you know, light me on fire. I'm already up on here. But what are normal temps for a 4670K? Uh, you know what? I don't think we've ever run it at stock speed. No. Sorry, man. Could you please unbox the Guardian 921? That's a really old case. It's hard for us to, uh... Hard for us to go back at older stuff. General rule of thumb for radiator space. The typical rule of thumb is one 120 millimeter radiator per heat component. So if you have a CPU and two GPUs, you should have at least a triple and don't expect it to be running silently. I personally double that rule in order to get an extremely quiet computing experience. Can you suggest a reasonably priced wireless gaming mouse? Uh Reasonably priced wireless game. Yeah, they're all kind of expensive. Yeah, I was just going to say. G700S, I actually kind of like. But it's not reasonably No, it's expensive. Priced. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Don't. No. Get a wire. Get a wired one. He's wearing a wire! <laughs> you could add a graphical settings option on console games. This is something we've discussed before. Yes, that could be a way That's to address. That's a lot more realistic now, though. That's true. That was not... Well, that could have been done... It wouldn't have been able to affect it that much previously. Right. It's way more realistic now. Quality over FPS, what's the point if it's not realistic? Okay, Ahmad figures that 30 FPS is totally fine. When will the K70 be released? I believe it's released already. Well, we have K70s, but the ones with different switches haven't been released. And would you take K70 or G710 Plus? Ooh, K70 is a more bare bones keyboard. G710 Plus has. Um, not only just multimedia controls, what they both have, but also macro programmable keys. It has O-rings on the brown switches, and I personally love brown switches. I love Logitech's gaming software compared to anything else that's out there. The 17 Plus is actually a really nice keyboard. It's, like, super nice. And it has, like, like you just said, all the premium extra additional things on top Remember of that it. deal NCIX had last week? That was insane. What was that for? G700 and 710 Plus? It was so like, 159 Yeah, I think it was basically it was the price of, like, a little bit more expensive... G710 Plus. Got the Verki Titan backpack, finally, because of Slick PC. Great choice. It's an awesome backpack, dude. Really is. Um, also, best sound card to match SP2500s. Uh, probably Essence, anything Essence. Yeah. Zonar. Yeah. I'm running uh, STX, but that's mainly because my headphones. 770 versus 760, 1080p single monitor. Which is best? Well, the 770. Duh. <laughs> And we have a video on this. Do we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did a review. Yeah. Yeah, we did a review. Yeah. Higher numbers is more better. Yeah. Except sometimes, where 760 is not necessarily better than 690. Oh. It's a higher number, but it's not better. Uh, I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, someone asked, what's the phone number to call in? Ah, yes, just a reminder, guys. If you ever want to call into the show, boom, Razor comms right there. Use that bit.ly link to download it. And that helps us out a great whole lot. I've heard that if you download it any amount of times more than one, that it actually improves the performance of your entire computer. <laughs> so if you download Razer Com using that link... Jeez. <laughs> what do you guys think about gaming laptops? And if you were to buy one, what would you buy? Uh, you, don't, you, okay. you know my stance on gaming I laptops. I know, okay. Not a gaming laptop guy. More, and I'm, I'm more this way these days. Small, thin notebook, high-performance desktop. Um, however, if I was going to buy a gaming notebook, I would probably look at something like the Acer G Series 14-inch. Okay. Or the new Razer Blade. And that's not just... Oh, man, I feel I like I'm like pimping Razer so hard. You haven't seen the new Blade yet? No. Our sample's in the mail. Cool. You're going to love oh, yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't seen either. Okay, it's basically like a MacBook Pro, like 14-inch, like really slim. Uh, GTX 765. Okay, cool. Doesn't get that hot. One thing I wish they did, and I know MSI did once on your suggestion, was that they put higher GPUs. They only have, like, one SKU. Oh, okay. So they've, that, like, the, like, the inside looks like a MacBook 2, with all, like, beautifully managed wires and all that. Like, this thing is a piece of art. That's awesome. Except for the TN panel. Uh, yeah. See, because, like... Ah. Anantech reviewed it. It has, like, one of the worst panels on any notebook they've ever reviewed. Oh. It's a 1600 by 900, though, so it's appropriate for the GPU. So from a strictly gaming standpoint, it's, like, like you can play games on it. But unfortunately, the contrast is, uh... Yeah. What I would like to do is get a nice laptop 
that has a bunch of RAM and a really fast CPU and then throw a just completely kick butt SSD in there and then just make it super fast. Yeah. But not like super fast graphics, just super fast all the time. Someone asked, how are the cats going with the litter quitter? We tried to move to the last stage not that long ago and there's a bit of a pee situation in my living room, so I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Low FPS, not as noticeable with the controller. I think we already had that call. Did you like that muscle car picture I sent you both? Yes. Balling. Yeah, that was awesome. What do you think of DirectX 11.2 and its amazing detail? I don't think anything until I see any actual games. Remember that DirectX 10 yep. uh, thing with the ocean? I still haven't seen a game with water that looks like that. <laughs> so, whatever. All right. Good night, everyone. We'll see you in the after party. If you decide to tune in, we'll be back live in hopefully around, uh, let's give us around five minutes. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.